Things at Starbase have been moving really quickly lately, and it's starting to look like the next Starship flight isn't far off. The clearest sign is Ship 39, now fully stacked with its entire heat shield system installed inside Mega Bay 2. Not far from there, Booster 19 is also coming together at a remarkable pace inside Mega Bay 1, and it just received a special new component that shows the build is progressing smoothly. So, how far along are these vehicles? And when exactly will Flight 12 take place? Let's dive into today's episode of Alpha Tech. We were supposed to be just about a month away from an exciting milestone, the long-awaited Starship Flight 12. This flight would have been special, featuring the brand new Starship version 3, Ship 39, paired with the version 3 Super Heavy, Booster 18. But everything changed after the incident on November 21st. During a pressure test, Booster 18's LOX tank catastrophically failed, ripping open its structure and leaving the entire vehicle beyond recovery. Not a single major section could be reused, so SpaceX had no choice but to cut it apart piece by piece using a laser torch and move the remains into storage. It wasn't until the afternoon of December 5th that the last remaining section of the booster was finally lifted by crane and moved to another test stand, on its way to complete recycling and to clear the area for what comes next. With Booster 18 gone, Booster 19 is now preparing to roll out from Mega Bay 1 to Massey's, where it will take on the cryogenic test that Booster 18 never got the chance to complete. But is Booster 19 really moving that fast? Of course not, at least not to that extreme. After the Booster 18 failure, SpaceX pushed the entire workforce to ramp things up, hard, because any delays now would threaten every major milestone planned for this year, reaching orbit, catching a starship with the tower, and even attempting the first orbital refilling demo. And the pressure shows. On November 26th, just five days after the incident, the first section of Booster 19 rolled out of Star Factory and went straight into Mega Bay 1. The next day, the Common Dome section followed. On the 29th, they moved in the A3 colon 4 section. On December 2nd, another section arrived. And by early morning, on December 4th, the A6 colon 4 section made its way into MB1, quickly followed by the bottom half of the transfer tube. So, in just about nine days, SpaceX rolled every major section needed to build an entire booster. A record-breaking pace, considering this process usually takes one to three months. And they didn't just roll the parts in, they actually stacked most of them. On December 7th, another key component entered Mega Bay 1, the massive fuel transfer tube, a piece so large it's about the diameter of a Falcon 9 booster. And what does that tell us? Four sections are already stacked, and once that giant tube is mounted in place, they'll attach the common dome, finalize structural fittings, and begin installing plumbing, wiring, pneumatics, sensors, avionics, and all the internal systems. That phase alone should take another one to two weeks, meaning somewhere around December 23rd or 24th, Booster 19 should be structurally complete and ready for cryogenic testing at the end of the month. After that, what comes next? Booster 19 will be rolled from Massey's back to Mega Bay 1 to finish the remaining work, installing the grid fins, adding the catch points, and the part everyone's looking forward to, watching SpaceX bring in each Raptor 3 engine one by one to mount onto the booster. And even more exciting is the moment it finally rolls out to launch Pad 2. If SpaceX keeps up this steady, accelerated pace, that rollout is expected to happen around January 20th. So, what about Ship 39? The last time it showed up on camera was back in mid-November. At that point, it was just a bunch of separate sections that SpaceX was slowly stacking together inside Mega Bay 2. But recently, on December 8th, spotters caught it again. And this time, it was a completely different story. Ship 39 is now a fully stacked, seamless vehicle. The heat shield system is almost entirely installed, which is why it looks so dark, glossy, and honestly, pretty intimidating. And here's the wild part. For a brand new Block 3 vehicle, the team only started real progress around mid-August, when the S39 nose cone first rolled into Mega Bay 2 from the Star Factory. That means it took them just about four months to fully stack the largest rocket upper stage in the world. And not just any version, but a new variant with major design changes compared to Block 2. To put that in perspective, NASA's SLS upper stage can take anywhere from two to four years to complete. 
Of course, Ship 39 doesn't have its Raptor engines yet. It still needs a full round of hardware checkouts before it can roll out to Massey's, which is expected to happen by the end of this week. And fingers crossed that its test campaign won't repeat what Booster 18 had to go through. But things are looking positive. SpaceX already built a dedicated test tank called S39.1, which went through a full cryogenic test on the night of December 4th for roughly seven hours. You can see the frost line barely shrinking throughout the test. A good sign that the tank held pressure well, kept its temperature stable, and didn't leak. These test tanks are usually built with the same propellant tank geometry as the real ship. They're meant for stress testing, pushing the structure to the limit before mass production. The goal is to confirm structural integrity and reliability under harsh spaceflight conditions, helping SpaceX avoid costly failures during full-scale launches. In other words, if S39.1 passes, Ship 39 is very likely to pass too, unless some unrelated issue pops up. All right, after the cryo test wraps up, likely around December 16th or 17th, Ship 39 will probably head back into Mega Bay 2 to get its engines installed. And not just any engines, but the most powerful, most expensive methane engines on the planet. So, what happens next? It'll roll back out to Massey's for its static fire campaign. And this time, things should move faster. There's no need to bring it all the way to Launch Pad 1. No need for all the complicated steps like mounting that stool on the OLM anymore. Speaking of the OLM, it's basically stripped down now. All the legs are gone, and crews have started clearing out the surrounding infrastructure. For example, compressed gas tanks from the Pad 1 deluge system are being removed one by one. Alright, that was a bit of a detour, but here's the simple version. If everything stays on track, Ship 39 should get its static fire in the last week of December, or early January 2026. After that, it'll be brought back in for final checkouts, payload installation, and FTS integration. And voila, it'll be ready for flight somewhere between January 24th and 27th, 2026. That's honestly not far off from the original timeline before Booster 18's incident, which means the SpaceX engineering teams are moving fast, pushing hard, and doing everything they can to keep momentum. So, hey, if you want to cheer them on, drop a Go SpaceX in the comments. Maybe it'll boost the schedule a little more. Oh, right, besides the vehicle itself, the launch pad is just as important. Pad 2 has been changing a lot lately, they even ran another round of flame deflector testing to make sure the whole system is in perfect shape before the next launch. And that's crucial, because this time, we're not dealing with 33 Raptor 2 engines anymore. We're dealing with 33 Raptor 3s. Super Heavy's liftoff force will be more than 22% stronger. It reminds me of Starship's very first test flight, IFT-1 in April 2023. Back then, Super Heavy was still using 33 Raptor 1 engines, yet it already produced around 7.5 million pounds of thrust, blasting out a firestorm with extreme heat and pressure. When it lifted off, it left behind a crater almost 9 meters deep, sending rocks and metal hundreds of meters away, shattering windows on SpaceX employees' cars, and shaking houses from 5 kilometers out. Elon Musk was thrilled because it showed how powerful the system was. But the aftermath gave him quite a headache. But thanks to that lesson, the new pad design is much tougher and far more advanced. The updated OLM structure is stronger, the water deluge system sprays around 7,000 gallons per second, and with the flame trench added, the insane power of Super Heavy Block 3 is now fully controlled. Anyway, long story short, Pad 2 is in good shape. There's just one unusual move SpaceX made on December 5th. They removed two huge hydraulic actuators from the Pad 2 chopsticks. Before that, just last week, the accumulators that support those actuators were also removed. This suggests SpaceX is inspecting and upgrading the entire hydraulic package. It's possible earlier tower tests revealed something like insufficient push force, slower response time, or uneven damping in the system. That would explain why they pulled the actuators for an upgrade, likely replacing them with higher flow, more stable, and more precise units. Nothing to worry about here. The actuators have been sent to the Sanchez site for work, and they're expected to be reinstalled once the upgrades are done. And honestly, this lines up perfectly with SpaceX gearing up for the first Starship Block 3 flights in early 2026, 
a period when the giant chopsticks will play a critical role in catching the booster and the ship. So, does that mean Flight 12 will feature both the Booster 19 catch and a Ship 39 catch? It would be incredible if SpaceX actually pulled it off. Imagine watching Booster 19 return just seven minutes after launch, drop straight into Mechazilla's arms, and then slowly get lowered onto the transport stand. After cooling down, because its post-flight temperature is insanely high, B-19 would be rolled straight back into Mega Bay 1 for inspection. Then, later in the mission, Ship 39 would come down for its own landing attempt. If that catch works too, SpaceX would hit two historic milestones on the same flight. Starship reaching orbit successfully, and the first ever ship catch by the chopsticks. It would be a dream flight, the kind of moment fans would talk about for years. But honestly, the chances of that happening on Flight 12 aren't high. This is the very first test of the Starship Block 3 design, and nobody can predict what hidden risks might show up. Remember the early flights of the Block 2 ships? They immediately revealed major issues, resonance problems, leaks, and several vehicles blew up mid-air, triggering investigations, complaints, even lawsuits. That's completely normal in rocket development, but SpaceX will try to avoid unnecessary risks wherever possible. And even if Ship 39 performs flawlessly in orbit, things could still go wrong during the landing attempt. That's why splashdown in the ocean is still the safer, preferred choice for both the ship and the booster. Booster 19 itself is also carrying brand new upgrades. It'll attempt a belly flop landing after receiving that massive fuel transfer tube, and it's the first booster flying with only three grid fins instead of four. With so many new variables packed into one flight, sending it to the ocean is simply the smarter move to protect the ground infrastructure. But no matter how these early Block 3 flights turn out, they're all stepping stones toward the real goal, the one Elon Musk has pushed for since day one making humanity a multi-planet species.